Take a listen to these two versions of a mix. One of those was mixed using Waves plugins, and the other mixed completely with free plugins. Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. This video is part five in a series of videos I'm doing called Make My Live Stream Sound Better, where we're gonna do just that. I've been walking you through how to set up an isolated live stream mix in your DAW, and in the last video, we went through and inserted all of our plugins, mostly using Waves plugins. And in that video, I mentioned that I've got kind of a love-hate relationship with Waves. While I think they have really great sounding plugins that can do wonders for your mix, I've been getting more and more frustrated dealing with their licensing. Also, if you've been paying attention to the music production community, you probably heard the uproar over Waves announcing that they'd be moving to a subscription-based model and you would no longer be able to purchase individual plugins. Paying $250 a year for access to all of their plugins actually doesn't sound like too bad a deal if you're just starting out and don't have any plugins yet. But I've already purchased all the plugins I want to use, and I have three machines using Waves plugins. So I was looking at $750 a year to keep using plugins that I've already paid for. Thankfully, there was such an uproar in the community that they backed down from the subscription model, and they're gonna be offering both methods to purchase plugins, at least for now. But all of that got me thinking and started me down a path of exploring what would it look like, or if I even could, create the same sound for our live stream mix without Waves plugins. And then more specifically, if I could do it with all free plugins. Because of course, everyone loves free. So let's take a look at some of the substitutions I've made. Take a look at my master bus effects chain. I'll start with the Waves plugins I normally use on the master bus and switch just the master bus over to the free substitutes. So my channels are still running Waves. Let's listen. There are some differences. How the mix comes together through different plugins and different gain structures through those plugins that are gonna cause some differences in balance. But this exercise has made me completely rethink the plugins that I'm using. The quality and quantity of free plugins available has come a long way. Not only do I feel like I could confidently replace some of my Waves plugins, there are actually a couple of free plugins I actually think sound better. That being said, I also think there are some Waves plugins that just do something magical that I haven't found an equal to. Maybe just a close second. For instance, the CLA Mixdown and the VEQ4 on the Master Bus. I haven't found anything out there for free that does the same thing these do. The Colon Compressor and the Fiverr EQ come up with a close approximation, but it's not quite the same. The Fiverr EQ, by the way, is not zero latency. It does cause 16 samples of delay on the Master Bus. The master bus is the one place where it's sort of okay to run plugins with a little latency, as it's causing your whole mix to be delayed, and it's not affecting individual channels, causing them to get out of time alignment. So while these two just come close to what Waves was doing, on the other hand, I like what the Fresh Air plugin does to the mix more than the Aphex Exciter. I especially like the two controls, high, mid, and high. I can dial in what I want from the plugin more precisely than with the Aphex Exciter. I've already permanently made this substitution on our template that we use here on Sunday mornings. The Loudmax plugin is similar and probably modeled after the Waves L2. I do find that it starts to distort in a bad way earlier than the L2. It's a bit touchy, you can't hit it quite as hard as the L2 without some distortion. But as long as you pay attention to that, it does a similar job and I'll talk more about adjusting these output limiters in the next video when we talk about getting the right volume for our live stream mix. Let's take a look at my vocal chain.
I really do like the Waves F6. It's been my go-to EQ plugin, and I had a hard time finding a dynamic EQ that could replace it. I've gone back and forth on what option to show you in this video, because what I've come up with is a Reaper-specific solution. You can't use the EQ plugin I'm about to show you in other DAWs. So far in this whole Make My Livestream Sound Better series, conceptually, you could do what I've shown you in just about any DAW. And except for this one plugin I'm about to show you, all the other VST plugins I'll show in this video, you can use in any other DAW as well. But because it was so hard to find a free EQ plugin that satisfied my requirements as a dynamic EQ, and since what I'm about to show you does, I'm gonna make an exception for it. Reaper has what are called JS plugins. In a nutshell, these are plugins that are scripted specifically for Reaper, and there's some pretty good ones out there available for free. One developer in particular, Toucan Studios, makes some really good plugins. So let me show you how to install this. First, you'll need to go to the Reaper website and under Resources, download the Reaper Package Manager. Choose the version that's appropriate for your computer, and that will download a .dll file if you're on a PC. Once that's downloaded, in Reaper, go to Options, Show Reaper Resource Path, and then copy that Package Manager DLL file you downloaded into the User Plugins folder. Then you need to restart Reaper, just close it and launch it again. Now under Extensions, you'll have this option, Rea Pack. Go to Import Repositories, now you need to paste in the link to the Toucan repository. I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. Then go back to the extensions menu, and this time we'll choose Browse Packages. And you should now be able to see all the Toucan plugins. And what we want is the Series 2 plugins. Select it, and now click on Actions and click Install. Now click OK, and a handful of plugins will get installed. Now when you click to insert a plugin on your channel, Go to the FX menu and click on Scan for New Plugins. And now if we search for Toucan, what we want is this Green Dynamic EQ S2. So what do I like about this plugin? First, it's zero latency. Unlike another popular free dynamic EQ, the Tokyo Don Nova, this one is zero latency. Also, like the Waves F6, it lets you solo a band and hear just what that band is affecting. Obviously, you would not want to do this while you're live, but during sound check, it's a great way to make sure that what you are adjusting is actually the sound you're wanting to adjust. And it can help you fine tune the cue of a band so that you're only affecting the frequencies that you're trying to actually make an adjustment to. And then of course, it has the dynamic part that lets you only attenuate a band after it's reached the threshold you set. So that's what I'm using to replace the F6. There are some other good Toucan plugins that are worth checking out, but for the sake of anyone who may not be using Reaper for their DAW, I'll try and stick to VSD plugins as much as I can. For the two compressors on my vocals, the LA-2A and 1176 replacements, I'm using this Slax compressor, and then after that to replace the 1176, I've got this MJUC Junior plugin set to the fast setting. And like I set up in the previous video, the Slax compressor gives me a little bit of gain reduction on just about every phrase, and the MJUC Junior only kicks in when things get pretty loud. Let's listen to the vocal reverb plugins, and I'll swap between them and show you my settings. First, the hall reverb. And the plate reverb. The old school verb from Voxango, I've got it adjusted quite a bit darker than the Waves H reverb, but I kind of like the tone that it's giving me even better than the H reverb. The plate on the other hand, the Abbey Rhodes plates, I think still sounds better, but this Room 041 by Analog Obsession does a decent job. With reverbs, pull them down until it's almost like it's not there, but if you were to mute them, it would be missed. Transfixed on 
Jesus On my vocal bus, I've replaced the Puke Child 670 with this Very Moon plugin. Let's go back and look at the drums. With Waves, I used a lot of the Sheps Omni Channel. That's basically a channel strip, so we need EQ and compression, and for some of the drums we'll need gating. And with that we should be able to achieve a similar sound. Just without the presets that the Omni Channel has, so it may take a bit longer to get the sound you want dialed in. Here's what I've come up with for kick. I started using Reaper's built-in gate plugin, but when I got to snare it just wasn't working for me and I had to find something better. The Sheps Omni Channel does a lot of expansion rather than straight gating, and when I was looking for something for the snare, I found a really nice expander, and so I actually came back to the kick and replaced it with this SEGX2. Next, the Green Dynamic EQ, and for compression, I've got this SPE comp from Analog Obsession that adds some nice punch. So let's take a listen. I kind of like the sound from the free plugins more, but that probably is because I haven't dialed in the Sheps Omni enough and I relied too much on the preset. On Snare, there's a lot going on with the Sheps Omni in the preset that I'm using, and this does show one reason why Waves plugins are useful. I really had to dissect all that the Sheps plugin was doing to try and get a similar sound. Even simple things like the fact that there is a high and low pass filter on the input made a difference in how the final sound came together. So to start, I've got Reaper's built-in EQ giving me the high and low pass filter on my input, and I did end up putting a bit of tone shaping with a low and high shelf filter here as well. Then this expander plugin. I have to admit, whatever the Sheps Omni is doing in their gate expander section just works really well to sound natural on drums, especially the snare. I just about gave up and decided to use a generic gate on the snare and just get as best as I could, but then I came across this expander, and it really is amazing on drums. Don't ever turn on the pre-gate setting though, as this will add latency to the plugin. But also, if you turn it on and then off, for some reason the latency doesn't go away until you actually remove the plugin and you have to re-add it to the channel. What this plugin does is basically have two expanders for high and low frequencies at a crossover point. And this helps it sound natural, and it stays open most of the time with the low snare thud, but it can stay closed during the higher cymbals that bleed into the mic. I think it does a really good job of focusing the sound of the snare. Listen to it with and without. Then I'm using the green dynamic EQ again, and then for compression, this plugin called Comper. This actually has two compressors in series, and that lets me get a bit punchier sound out of the snare. For the first compressor, I matched what the Sheps was doing, basically a parallel compressor with a really low threshold, so everything is getting compressed. But the mix knob is set to 35%, so 35% of the compressed snare sound is being mixed in with the original uncompressed sound. That sound matched the Sheps pretty well, but since I had this second compressor, I set it to the FET setting to try and get more of an 1186 punchier sound. And again, for all free plugins and just a bit more time spent setting it up, I'm pretty happy with this substitution. But it does make me appreciate all that the Sheps Omni Channel does for you with its presets. On the snare bottom, I used the Reaper EQ with a decent amount of high pass, and the same expander again. I changed its high and low thresholds, and that's pretty much it. For the snare reverbs, this was a difficult one, because most free reverbs I tried tended to fall apart and not sound good with transient sounds like drums. But for the plate reverb, this epic plate from Variety of Sound works pretty well on the M Vocal Stage 1 preset. I'm just using Reaper's EQ plugin here on the input to do a bit of high and low pass shaping of what goes into the reverb.
so a little different sounding, but accomplishes the same thing. For the more hall type reverb, I actually found that the Reverbate plugin that comes built into Reaper did a good job at giving me what I was looking for from this reverb. On the hat, I just had an EQ with a high pass, so I just swapped that out for Reaper's EQ. On my toms, I found this channel strip plugin loaded from Analog Obsession that doesn't necessarily match all that the Shep's Omni was doing. I tried this on snare and it didn't quite do it for me, but it does enough for what I need on the toms, and it does have a nice gate. It works better on drums than a lot of just straight gating plugins that I tried. Then for the toms reverb, I just used the Reverb 8 plugin again. For the cymbals, as I explained in the last video, since we have our cymbals individually mic'd from underneath, these aren't overheads, so they don't need the processing that an overhead mic would get. They pretty much just get the cymbals. So all I usually do is EQ them with a pretty generous high pass on each channel. So again, I just use Reaper's EQ. On the drum bus, I'm using this OSS compressor. I matched the compression settings from the Sheps 2 to 1 ratio, about 17 milliseconds attack, and a really slow release. And then I adjusted the input to get about 9 dB of compression. Then used the output control to bring the level back. Then for a bit of tone shaping, I've used this TEQ421 from Voxengo. It's a simple three band EQ, but it also adds harmonic overtones. So just a little on the high and low gives a nice polish. So let's try a complete A-B comparison of all Waves plugins on the drums and then all free plugins on the drums. It took me a lot of hunting and trying tons of different plugins to get where this mix is. I tried so many plugins that either didn't sound very good or some that sounded great but would crash or act weird and I couldn't rely on them, especially for mixing in a live environment. All of these free plugins are listed down in the description of this video. There are different hoops you need to jump through to install them. Some may come with an installer that puts the plugin file where it needs to be on your computer, or others like the Slate Fresh Air, you've got to register an account with your email address and get a download link sent to you. So just jump through those hoops until you get the plugin installed. Most of them, you'll just end up downloading a .vst3 or .dll file, and you need to get that moved into the folder where Reaper is looking for plugins. On a PC or Mac, that's usually these folders. And just in case you're thinking, well, it all sounds the same, the plugins must not do very much. Listen to what this sounds like with no plugins. Let's take a look at my bass. When I'm remixing recorded live tracks in post, I usually use the Waves Bass Cabinet Emulator, but it's not zero latency, so I don't use it live. But I found this free plugin called Bass Deluxe 1 from Lost in the 70s, and it does a good job of setting up a nice bass tone. Take a listen to what it does. Next I've got just the Reaper EQ for a little tone shaping and then a compressor that's modeled after the DBX160. Mm -hmm. 
On acoustic guitar, I've just got the Reaper EQ and then the same Slax compressor we used on our vocals. And I've kept the wider plugin we used before because it's not from Waves and it's free. I have it duplicated on the channel so our comparison is fair. Here's what that sounds like. On the electrics, I'm not doing a whole lot of processing. Like I said in the last video, these are coming off of amp simulators and they've got a good tone out of the box. So mainly I'm gonna be adding an EQ for a high pass filter to keep them out of the way of the bass. And then a compressor that really acts more as a limiter in case something unexpected happens. I put this MJUC Junior for that set to the fast attack setting. And I'll adjust the compress knob up until it starts some compression when they are playing normal volume and then back it off just a bit. On the piano, I'm just using Reaper's EQ, but I also found this plugin that I really like on piano, and it's called PSP Piano Verb. It's a reverb that's modeled after the resonance of piano strings, and it really does sound great on piano. Take a listen to what this does. And of course on my audience mics, all I was doing there was some EQ, so I've just replaced that with Reaper's EQ. So here again, let's listen to the full mix with Waves plugins and then with the free plugins. It's definitely different. Some of that, of course, can be attributed to my skill or lack thereof as a mix engineer and being able to match the sound between plugins. But the question you need to ask is, is it $250 a year different? Is it worth it for you to pay for the Waves plugins? I've put together templates for churches over the past couple weeks using both Waves and all free plugins. And to be honest, I think both came out sounding pretty good. There are definitely some Waves plugins that sound amazing, and because I'm familiar with them, I can mix with them faster. But there are also some plugins in our template here at the church that I'm going to start swapping out with some of those free plugins. I think which you decide to go with is something you need to decide based on your situation and what you need, but free is always an easy way to start making your live stream sound better. I hope you found this video helpful. In the next video, we're going to look at volume. How do you know if you're sending the right volume to your live stream? I'll answer that question and talk some more specifically about how to use this setup we've created here in Reaper with waves or free plugins to maintain a consistent and correct volume level to your stream. Until next time, bye.